Homeschool parents, this is a message for you. As a homeschooler, I know you work hard for us. You have many different things to manage. Our Thinking, Feeling, Willing program is your roadmap to a successful Waldorf homeschool journey. Gain the confidence you need to be the teacher your child wants and transform your homeschool experience. Homeschooling with Waldorf Essentials is one like no other. You not only have curriculum options, you can also add our Thinking, Filling, Willing program onto your curriculum. What's in the Thinking, Filling, Willing program? Rhythm, inner work, temperament, the Waldorf curriculum, learning and strengthening your skills in music, circle time, form drawing, handwork, painting, drawing, modeling, festivals, reading, writing, spelling, eurythmia and movement, and our bonus content. Something else you'll get when you join Waldorf Essentials that you will not find anywhere else is the community, and we all need that as homeschoolers. This is your invitation to fill your cup. We know you're rooting for us. We are rooting for you too. Welcome everybody to our podcast. I am so excited today to have my good friend, Harard Sepker with me. He is our teacher from South Africa. We met through seasons of seven, but I am so excited and so happy that you are also my good friend because we have a lot of fun chit-chatting together. And yes. So anyway, today we're going to talk about class five and, um, and, and Harard's going to talk to us about, you know, just sort of the things that are, who's ready for it and the content for class five. But before we get started, I want to go ahead and have you introduce yourself. Tell us about yourself, Harard. Oh, thank you so much. And it's, it's always this beautiful thing with uh, the two of us. I, I think even when we have meetings, we sometimes have to stop typing and focus right. because, you know, it will be about movies sending or something. Sending each other notes in between. <laughs> yeah. Um, and this is the director, so it's, it's a bit naughty, but anyway, so my name is Gerard Sipker, and I just always love how my American colleagues, they say Gerard so beautifully. And oh, we so did it's that for like the first month until you corrected us. And it's, but it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So you often say it even better than people that I know. So it's, it's, I'm an Afrikaans man. So it's Gerard Sipker. It's very Germanic, but, and so I have, um, I don't want to say how many years it's been a long time that I've been a both of teacher, but, and then this, we're going for our fourth year with seasons of seven. So it's, it's a beautiful time because our, our um, time zones don't clash. It's a Saturday afternoon and it's a winter's day. And it's, of I have all these the clocks up here. So I always <laughs> this exactly. one is Gerard's time zone. So I there always know what time it is at your house. So it, it's really beautiful so that we can have this. And yes, I've been very blessed to um, have taught from class one to class eight now. And um, and this year we also on new adventures with Guardians, uh, Guardianship. So excited. So excited. We'll talk about that a little bit towards the end because I want to tell everybody about the Guardian program. I am like super excited about what we're doing for high school. So let's talk about, let's talk about class five. Tell me who is ready for class five, because and what, a, what a beautiful question. You know, it, 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 I get this, <clears throat> I have to get a little bit uh, sentimental because it was the year that I started my world of journey. I took a class from class five and you know what? It, it's easy when people say it's the golden age and, and those are words until you experience it because right. I'm also very blessed to, to be finishing up with the bricks and mortar class now in class five. And those, <laughs> I'm going. To, I'm going to be naughty. Those children are perfect. They all children are perfect. All children are perfect. But class five children, goodness gracious, they have everything right. Don't you agree? It's it's just, and so class four really prepares them because the, the watching kind of stops. They they watch, but they get they get stuck in. They get they they find their way. They so upright and they so um, in touch with what they want to do. They write more, they challenge themselves, they move better. And I'm, I'm always that world of teacher that just says a big thank you to the curriculum because it, it just, it just totally works. They seem almost graceful in class five. Very, it was so very. much more so than they were in class four when you may have been focusing so much on the Loki type things that they're doing or thinking or saying, but class right. feels like you can 
almost breathe out just for a year because class six is going to kick your hiney. It, 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 <laughs> exactly. And, and, and you see, and, and I always, I tease the parents mercilessly if you've been on a long journey. I always say to them in class, class six, there's either a lot of conflict between the teacher and the parent or a lot of hugging because we, we, we but we prepared because we've seen it. We, we right. see how they, we see the change. We see how they, they, they're not so kind anymore, but it's because they have their own they have their turmoil. Own. But you see in, in class five, this curriculum, it, it, you can f see it feeding them. It, it's you know it, it's it's I I love when we start with the ancient mythologies, mm -hmm. right? Because those stories are still very beautifully rich. So you weave that in, in and and for me, I often focus a lot more on the Indian mm. myths because it's vast right. and rich. And and then of course, I love to have that conversation with them because now we can start seeing the creation story thread of all cultures. Right. And it is such, it's like a, it's like a bookend almost. You, you really get this. Exactly. What comes after class five is almost like it's the history from that space forward. And so now you've exactly. kind of given it to them. And I remember we did not start with the ancient cultures. I think that was our second block this year. Cause my daughter just finished class five and she was so hungry for those ancient cultures. So exactly. hungry and so indignant that I was making her do other things first. <laughs> and, and do you know what I love? It's like, I'm, I'm very lucky to, to have um, in my class, Hindu children, mm -hmm. uh, like in my bricks and mortar, Hindu, Muslim. And, and so when, we speak about Brahma and Shiva, and there's mm -hmm. this we can share. And of course, you've got your Catholic children. You have mm -hmm. a, all all a, a beautiful mixture. So the, the the stories become exceptionally rich. In like I've just started Persia, um, so we speak about Zarathustra, and you speak about Ariman, and then you you speak speak about light and dark, and the, you, and you know what happens? It's that you can see these little aha moments. Oh, 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 and what's beautiful. There's no judgment. You know, children just see the story and go, oh my gosh, okay, that's a lot like mine. Right. And so, that's it. And so many people are so worried that if you're going to talk about these things, their children are going to want to go to these things. But truly what I see happening is they see the similarities and it is such a beautiful space because they're not really judging it. At all. At all. Because they, they're they loving the warmth of those stories still. You know, the... the um, Indra and and like even Ariman and then like we, the 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 creation story of when the heart of man is planted again and out of that man and woman's born and then Ariman has these dark creatures you can't really call a snake a dark creature you know but it's it's the it's the stereotyping so if if Ahura Mazda makes one Ariman makes another one and it's and it's this beautiful juxtaposition in a way and and how children can do um and when the art comes out of their own it it shifts and when you look at it, this is the thing that blows my mind when you look at a class five book my, you can feel your job's done here because now when you draw on the board <laughs> you have to be on your toes because they have found their niche and you know what they're better than you now <laughs> I, I concur I, and, and I don't know if it's because they have way more time to practice than we do <laughs> I don't know. Oh, you know when they do their borders and they do their writing and then they and you think what's just happened and it it feels overnight but it hasn't been it's been oh, it's been bit by bit it's it's beautiful it's and and I, I feel then one thing flows into another like when you do the botany um mm -hmm. and the, the observational skills we, I, I start this little tradition that you have to have a plant with you during those four weeks. Melissa, something beautiful happens. They give them names. Mm -hmm. They water them. They Some children will take them out when we do movement. And those, and those plants really live, you know. And then you start doing that beautiful Goethean observation without telling them, you know. Right, right. Don't give them all the words for it. But right. Draw, look at, seriously, look at that plant every week. And they, then you, sometimes as a teacher, you forget. And they come, oh, did you see? Look here. And my best was when a mushroom grows in your pot plant, because then you think, thank oh, you. Yes, That's yes. what you want, you know. Yes, yes, yes. That's a pretty. So awesome. it's, it, it, class five is, so I, I get very excited about class five. And, and I think for, for a teacher and even a parent, 
there is that harmony that you can feel I can breathe. You know, I can breathe. It flows, it flows very easily. There's still a lot of work to do, but the work gets piled on them because not piled on them, they've got to own it and they want it. Right. And I, I do feel like class five really prepares them for what's coming. Like the, you know, they've had, they've always had richer, rich content through the lower grades, but the content for class five seems like it's so much more and they're taking in so much more. And it's really in preparation for what's coming next and what's coming next. I also found is my daughter is, she was a very young, so she, her birthday's in April. So she just finished class five and she's 12. And, and I could see, I could see the change right around 12, just as it should be to, I'm, I'm ready to move on. Yes. So yes. like she was, you know, we, thankfully we just had botany at the end. And so it wasn't too much, too many stories, but it was, I could feel the difference in her and I could fe feel her opinions come back. Yes. It yes. was almost like they took a break for a year. <laughs> and now, now I'm like, shh, I can't say those things in public. Wait till no. we get to the car. <laughs> <laughs> there's but, definite difference between that 11 year old and that 12 year old so much so and but also in the humor for me you've now known me i for me i'm going to say many years i i feel a success in my class is the humor it's like uh also the higher self you know i'm not talking clowning they they get it they they can dish That's it out beautifully place. you know i have children that book they love to tell you the dad jokes you have to harness that. And, you know, you take that into a child that struggles with writing, you know, and it mm -hmm. just, it's like a seed. It just, it, it, it pops. I agree. So it, all these gems that they show you. I agree. I I, I think I, I love class five, but I say that about every grade, every grade. I'm like, we, so excited. We all do. <laughs> I'm at this place now because I've homeschooled, you know, all five of my children and, and I'm on my youngest and, I, I had this like bittersweet moment at the last of class five going, oh wait, it's the last time I'm teaching that. Yeah. And and as we're going into class six, like knowing it, of course, my children all say, I'm going to bring my children to you. It's not the same when you're the grandparent. It's not. It's no. not. Because you think about those children differently. Um, but no, it's just each class is just so, so beautiful. So exactly. let's talk about like the general content of class five. and. Okay. Is it different? Because I was thinking about this with you in South Africa and I always, you know, I write curriculum. So I'm always trying to think about all the angles for wherever people live, but it, do you do anything different in your bricks and mortar in South Africa than you do at season seven that has sort of all the children? Um, I'm just our geography. If, if you think about it, it's really just the geography and, and even that. So for me, um, what I've loved is to, do this beautiful learning curve for me because I'm teaching American children. So I've really immersed myself in the in the states and and the, the capitals and and of course the um, habitats and uh, etc. So mm -hmm. it is your ancient myths. It is and and you know what we we still we can call it history because it it moves towards right. the history. And I just I really just need to share one thing. In 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 Rudolf Steiner's indications, he speaks about this these epochs, and he speaks about um, especially Greece. Okay, mm -hmm. and what is so amazing, and this it just again oh. during the time of Greece, you had thinking, feeling, and strong will. Okay, when you look at a class five child, you're not going to get them better. They want to move. They move well. They they are thinking, and they have this will. And so, because they are orators, so when you when you do some, when you do speech work, they all stand up a little bit. You know, when they get to class six and seven, you've got to maybe say, "I'll give you fifty dollars if you just stand up and." <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> so, and then again, you just see that the wisdom in that because then when you go into Rome in class six, six it's more about the speaking. It should be. You see things shift and change, but okay. that's why you do Greece. So I just wanted to give that, and then of course the geography. It, because they've gone from their little world and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I, I love it when there's a tiny bit of overwhelm because they think, wow. And then it gets exciting. You know, when you, I remember when I, I'm sure you did that as a child, when you played it with an Atlas, do you remember what that was like? And you, you're finding these, these spots and, and 
Because you're and really sort of looking at the world in such a different way then. Exactly. And you see, you really start telling them America. I don't, it's, it, and you know, it's vast. It is, you know, you look at different time zones. You look at, at, at biomes. You look at, it, it's, yeah. and you know what there, when you say, when is it? Remember when we were talking and you were saying, when is it too much? You've got to be careful now because okay. it can become facts and intellectualization and then children catch on to something that they love and they hold on to that and then it becomes um, Almost just one dimensional and obsessive. It does. So so you've, you, you, you've got to work with it quite, um, I call it homeopathically, you know. Where yeah, you no, I know, I like that. I like that absolutely because I I do think that it is and I'm not sure how public schools are where you are but in American schools public schools it's often they teach American history third fourth fifth grade like the same content yes, yes. over and over and so when parents are used to that thought and they come to me and they ask me like well where is this American history and they say well, we actually put it where they'll they'll keep it, where 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 they'll remember it. So when we're talking about geography and of America and the um, the regions, we're not talking about all the horrible things that happened. We're just highlighting here and there because it's really easy to go really deep. It's really easy. and 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 they're not quite ready yet. So no. really, they'll be ready when you get to like eighth and ninth grade and you start talking about that more deeply when you start talking about the slave trade or you start talking about the trail of tears with native um native people here exactly that that is you want to save that for when their intellect is open enough that they mm -hmm. are ready to look at it from a different way what tends to happen in my experience is when you do that with uh an 11 or 12 year old you're going to just make them sad and great and you've got to handle that well because you see, what you also want for the class, uh, class eight and nine is that they don't just use one source. You see, that we've got to dig right. a bit deeper. But many older teachers have always said to me, we sometimes can't hold them back, but we've got to hold them in, right. in channeling them. Because if a child wants to know more, you should show them that. But not. But you see, at the moment in, in the world, we're showing them too much, too quickly, Agreed. And we forget that, I, for example, my, my, my child's in class seven, and she sometimes, when we discuss something, we talk something, she's reading the diary of Anne Frank. Mm -hmm. I had to explain to her the other day for the first time, she said, Dad, what were the Nazis? And we were alone in the car. It's one of my, I love the second rule. Not, I don't love the second world rule, but it's, it's the facts and what right. happened during right. the time. Mm -hmm. So I had to explain that to her. Because she wasn't and there so yet in history. She's not there yet, but she's in class seven. So she's going into class eight. Um, but there is an awareness. So it's a beautiful moment that you, and it's as, and I'm speaking like, even as parents, you've got to have those moments and think, okay, <laughs> think now, think. Right. You get, because that, because sometimes we, oh yeah, here we go. Um, where do babies come from? Well, here we go. Let, I was no. just going to say that. I was just going to say, when I was pregnant with, with Sam, who's now almost 17, you know, I am my big belly and I had a, my, my second son was six. So he was just eye level. And okay. I remember we were like in Home Depot and I'm checking out his eye level and you could tell he's really thinking. And so he says, so how did that baby get in there? Yeah. And the cashier's right. eyes got as big as saucers. And she's trying not to laugh. And I we go. Well, let's let's just talk about it in a few minutes. So we get to the car and I say, you know what? God put him there. That was all he needed. That's okay. And he was six. And that's not the invitation to say everything when they're six. So you <laughs> have to, as a parent, tease out what are they actually asking? Exactly. You know, like are they asking just a really simple question? The Correct. really simple answer. You don't have to give them the keys to the universe with every question. Because I sometimes think that little mind goes, that's not what I wanted to hear. Right. I think that. Oh. I think they're like, and then I think it actually stunts them from asking questions later because they're afraid of the, the it's full. It's a little bit too real too quickly. Yes. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> so let's see. We talked about, um, we talked about ancient cultures. We've got some botany in class five. Um, and how would you say, 
uh, I would love your perspective. Um, when we are looking at, at man and animal in class four, it's the specific relationship. And when we're looking at botany in class five, it is, again, a specific relationship. Plants to... Again, you, you speak about human beings. You bring that mm -hmm. to, you know, with our breathing, because you you you, you bring photosynthesis to them in class um in class five but you bring it again in class eight mm -hmm. okay so, but then and it's this beautiful our breathing and so the, the art in itself I, I love drawing a human being on the board and then you have this this correlation so we are constantly trying to bring um the science okay not just the touchy-feely right you, you've got you, you are bringing the science you're bringing the, the source of the sun and what happens and the compost and and the real life and you know i mean melissa it, it, it's it's unbelievable even for an adult when you do put a little bean right in, it's and always a miracle it, and you think goodness gracious you know, you so, grow? yeah so, so we do name those things but it's again again people don't have the patience to observe okay we're not observing we want answers answered but then you say but what has the answer brought you have you worked a little bit for that answer have you seen something you see we're not seeing we're not experiencing stuff you know and then even you know for me sometimes when i am making the videos and sometimes i am on the beach i choose to not take a picture and i do i <laughs> you've not you know i share rhinos and elephants and everything with the children because i want to there are moments that i think this needs to be mine Okay, as fifty year old man that thinks, oh, this is a beautiful. Just I can't, and we need to start start bringing that because otherwise we're walking around like this. And, and hey, on this season of seven people, we this is our work, but we've harnessed that and we've we've brought that beauty to it. Um, and then it's quick and okay. What's next? What's next? You haven't had time to, to sit with it at all. Right. I think that that is so important and. You know, I, I work in class four to start consolidating that a bit, but then class five, they really get to really practice it, the space yes. of what does this mean? And 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 how do, what am I thinking about this? For the right. first time really in their childhood, they're really thinking in a much different, much deeper way. Right. They're asking questions that, again, aren't asking about the case of the universe generally, but they're asking they're asking like some depth that you have to be prepared for as a parent and you have to be prepared to, if you're not good at just sitting and processing something, you have to get good at it so that you get to. Exactly. The quiet moments, just, just quickly. And, and sometimes you don't have the answer and that's also okay. That's also okay. It's totally Let's awesome. find it. We always, it's uh, teaching one one Let's find it together. I don't, you know, because sometimes you you want to and then you ruin it you, you can ruin a moment and and i think that's that's what we have to focus on with the children i agree i agree that's so beautiful all right we're going to close up this part and um dive into our patron only space before cool. i do i just want to say if any of you have children that are going into class five and you'd like Harar to be your teacher in 2023 2024 Join us over at Seasons of Seven mm. um, for class mm. five. He's also teaching class eight and he's going to have a presence in our high school that I'm so excited about. So let's actually talk really quickly about the guardianship. What things do you and Miss Daniela have up your sleeve for our kids? Oh, you know, it's it, it's such an amazing thing because it, it's it's quite organic and we 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 really want the the high school children to to take ownership firstly of community of each other right, right? so which is so hard and, i think sometimes in this virtual space so correct so so we we are looking at things like your social responsibilities what what kind of like outreach um what can you do what in your community so um and also sometimes giving them subjects to speak about so that when we meet on a thursday that we have that. What are your challenges? How are you doing your time management? Um, I sometimes they feel a little bit, I always say that's safer to speak to their guardian or the, the guardians to say, right. this is what I'm struggling with. This again assists our colleagues in the high school to say, um, 
we, we're having a bit of a problem or, or a challenge in getting things completed. Do, do you see, and, and you know, Melissa, you and I have spoken about this a lot. You know, it, the pressure comes, class eight, nine deadlines and these things. Mm -hmm. Your boss one day, I always, you know I've said this many times, he's not going to care about your beautiful green eyes <laughs> and your winning smile. He's going to fire you <laughs> because you right? haven't made it. And, that, and that's, that's so important. And and so you have to take ownership of that, and and because you have time, so we're going to assist in that kind of thing. What are your challenges? What 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 can you do to better that? And that that's kind of, and then of course speak about the festivals and create festivals and and yeah. and, and 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 so it's it's quite vast and it's. Um, I think it's going to be so much fun. I I I know that with you know the first few years we've been really trying to figure out how do we, that, because the lower grades feel cohesive because they have one teacher. I mean, they have enrichment too, but they have one teacher that really holds them. And the high school hasn't totally felt that way. And so I really feel very excited to have this piece because I do think they'll feel held. And you'll be like the homeroom teacher and the counselor all in one space. And I feel like that is, um, I think it's so important. And I think about, especially kids that have, um, not necessarily homeschooled ones because homeschoolers, we're a lot more active than people think we are, but kids yeah. that maybe didn't do anything for the last few years. They're now in a space of almost feeling stunted. And so yeah. this will help them come out of that shell a little bit and help them with those things, simple things and complicated things. And so I, again, I'm super excited about that opportunity. All right, so we're going to close this. If you want to hear the rest of our conversation about class five, including all crazy and juicy bits, then join us over on our Patreon. Find our Patreon at Ariel's Light. So Ariel's Light, if you haven't heard already, is the ministry that we started this year. Interfaith, so we welcome people of all faiths to come and, and experience and, and converse and really get to know this conscious parenting space. I, I see it as a space for people that might be deeply into the religion, like being able to go deeper in what that parent-child relationship means. And then people that are just trying to figure out like, what does this inner work journey mean to me? Or in that space, and I've been there, trying to figure out, well, how do I bring what's welling up inside me to my children so that they aren't lost in confusion, so that they actually have this piece of goodness and beauty that Steiner always talks about. So the ministry has um, roots of anthroposophy and we will be talking about things from an anthroposophical standpoint, but also really bringing you good content that you can bring into your life 